Hi, I'm Robin Mitchell and this is Maker.io. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to connect two NeoPixels together. Now, a quick word on NeoPixels before we dive into the whole thing. This is gonna be purely speculation, but from what I understand about NeoPixels, I believe this is how they work. So NeoPixels essentially have an input and an output, and they can be connected in a big old chain. So the first one has an input, and this output goes into the input of the second one, the output of that one goes to the third one, fourth one, like a big old chain link. Now the computer or the controller sends a signal to the first one and then it passes that signal all the way down the chain. Now a computer or a controller connects to the first pixel in the chain and then any signals are then passed along through the entire chain. But how do you address individual pixels? How does each pixel get its unique address? Well, the way it works is rather clever. When you send a message down the chain, you send it in like a packet for like LED 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The first LED looks at always will always look at the very first packet and goes well this is what this is what I am because this is the first packet then it transmits the rest of the packet information because that's not relevant to that LED but it doesn't send the very first packet because that was about itself so the second LED sees a packet that's slightly shorter but it also looks at the front and goes well that must be me and so this message going down the chain gets a lot shorter and shorter and shorter so you don't have to know the address of any single LED. No LED has a unique identifier or a MAC address or some kind of unique IP address. Because they're connected in a chain, the first NeoPixel will always shorten the message ever so slightly for the next NeoPixel. So the first NeoPixel looks at the first LED packet information and says, well, this is the color I need to be. Then it obviously removes it off the chain and sends the rest of the message because it doesn't care what that message is because it's not to do with it. But the next LED looks at the very first package and goes, well, that must be me. And this message just gets smaller. So it doesn't matter how many of these things you put in a row, as long as, oh, well, to my knowledge, I think they can be indefinitely done up to a certain point because obviously these are time, the packages, because it's a single wire bus, it has to have very strict timing control. So there's probably some sort of realistic limitations how many of these things you can have in series. But the, uh, the way that you basically chain these is that these modules have an input and an output. So on the uh, ring, for example, you'll have a very small pin at the very, or very, very small pad, sorry, at the top called in. And so that's what your controller connects to. But there's also a really strange right on the top, sort of uh, top left of the module, which is out. And on the back, it says data out. This connects to the in of the next ring. And just like that, you've connected two of them together and whatever messages you just send down these NeoPixels, they can all be addressed. But these have 24 LEDs on them. So in your program code, you don't say, I'm gonna set up a NeoPixels object with 24 LEDs. You set it to 48 because you've now got 48 LEDs in the chain. And so you can add any type of module you want and chain any type, any type of thing and all you have to do is just account for the fact that there are more LEDs and suddenly you can access any of those LEDs in the chain. So that's all there is to chaining NeoPixels. Thank you for watching and see you next time.